Hey guys, it's MJ, the Student Secretary, and what you are looking at here is an exam that everybody failed. So it was a banking exam, it was the very first banking fellowship exam. And just to prove to you that everyone did fail it, um, what I'm showing you here are the pass results or the yeah, the exam results for the November 2015 examinations for the fellowship subjects in South Africa. For, for the health fellowship, 25 people presented themselves, 4 people passed. For life insurance, 75%, uh, 75 people presented themselves, 23 passed. Now, remember, in order to, to write these exams, you need to have completed all 8 of the core technical subjects, uh, all 3 of the core application subjects, and 2 of the specialist subjects. So we're talking about hardcore actuaries having a go at these exams. General insurance, 31 presented themselves, only 6 passed. 14 presented themselves with pensions, only 4 passed. Investments, 21 candidates present themselves, 6 passed. But when it came to the banking exam, 8 people presented themselves and no one passed. So this is going to become a little bit of a legendary exam in the sense that it's an exam that no one has, well, no one passed. So here it is, it's the exam that nobody passed. And I mean, you can see it's, it's four pages long, and I've actually got the solutions over here, which are 26 pages. So the marking schedule goes 26 pages deep. I mean, I've looked for the other fellowships, um, and their answers only are 17 pages. So it's like 10 more pages. I do think they, may, they put maybe a little bit more detail to help candidates, um, you know, explain the questions a little bit better. But yeah, let's go through this exam. Because I don't know, may, maybe you guys could, could have passed this exam. This is... This is the very first question. Um, it's for 20 more, 24 marks in total. It says you are the head of a retail uh, credit, or what, you are head of retail credit at a prominent bank in South Africa. Your portfolio includes credit cards, overdrafts, home loans, and personal loans for all retail customers. One of the responsibilities of your team is to review the provisioning results obtained from the centralized area that calculates the provisioning requirements monthly. Now, you need to explain why a bank should raise credit provisions, why it is important to determine the value of credit provisions accurately, and what type of credit provisions exist. I actually don't even know where I would start with that question. Um, then for eight marks, over the last quarter, you have noticed that the provisions held for the retail credit card and overdraft portfolio have increased significantly in RAND terms. Please see the table below, so that's over here. Um, for recent financial information, Explain how you would evaluate and compare these results. Include details how you would establish possible causes for the results in your answer. Then they also give you some more information here. And you have to explain how you would validate the suggestion. Include different courses of action available to the bank in your answer. Wow. <laughs> I mean, that's just question one. Um, question two you're a multinational bank, uh, calculate the economic capital requirement for the following year with a probability of adequacy of 99.9% that the company has in, what, the company has internal control frameworks that allow to identify and quantify the risk to which it is exposed. Then there's a whole bunch of, wow, yeah, this is, you can see why no one passed this exam. I mean, I'm just looking through this and it's, it's quite insane. Liquidity coverage ratio, net stable funding ratio. I mean, the scary thing is I, I kind of qualify to write this exam. I mean, if we come, if we jump to the syllabus, is in order to write this fellowship exam, they recommend that you have specialized in subject F106 and in F105, which is finance and enterprise risk management. These are two subjects which I have passed. Yet, I went through that paper. Look, I haven't studied banking or anything, but, you know, I've got the groundwork and I didn't understand the questions and even know where to start. Um, F105, this is like subject ST5 and F106 is like subject ST9 for people with the English exams. Yeah, South Africa's confused everyone by giving the exams different, uh, <laughs> different names. But, I mean, just look at the, the syllabus that you need to know. You need to demonstrate knowledge and understanding of the operations of a banking institution in South Africa. I mean, you look here, and this is just what you need to know for the very first part of the syllabus. I mean, check out all those different risks, okay? 
all of that is, you could almost write a book on each of these things. I mean, outline the various sources of funds that banks use to fund their operations, including deposit taking, wholesale marketing, central bank funding, tier one, tier two capital. Then there's all these other various risks. And that's just part one. I mean, as you can see, there is part two, demonstrate knowledge and understanding of typical corporate governance structure of a banking operation in South Africa. There's a whole bunch of stuff over there. Then it goes on to page three. I don't know if, if we should go through this entire syllabus because it is quite depressing. I mean, it's highlighting all these things that, that I don't actually know. Uh, demonstrate knowledge and understanding of the role of a risk management in a banking operation. Demonstrate knowledge and understanding of the credit risk measurement framework in a banking operation. Um, okay, that's stuff I mean, we did in the, the previous F106, so that's not too bad. But I mean, just the mere quantity of stuff that you need to know for this exam. I mean, and that's also the thing, is no one had any past, past papers um, to help them out with this. So, yeah, 0% zero, zero of the people passed it in November. Although they did write the exam again now in June, and four people passed. So the June paper that was written this year has been passed. So I don't think this, the subject is you know, totally impossible to do, but this, this very first exam had a pass rate of 0%. And if I'm correct, I think South Africa is the only country in the world that offers the banking uh, fellowship. No other country does that. I mean, South Africa is one of the, the leading countries when it does come to, to banking. We're very innovative. Um, you know, we're very good with financial services. And yeah, I mean, check, this is part eight. I mean, this, this list just goes on and on. I mean, market lockout, funding concentration, regulatory PRA metrics. What on earth? Something ratio. I mean, this is, this is intense. So now, why I'm actually going through this is because I need to choose which fellowship I should do. Should I do this banking fellowship, which looks like alien language, or do I go with the, the finance fellowship? So I'm reading through both of these, um, both of these syllabuses, and I'm leaning towards finance. Um, who knows? Maybe when I pass finance, I'll write this one as well. Um, although I must say, some of the stuff does look quite interesting. I mean, demonstrate knowledge and understanding of the liquidity risk management framework and process in banking operations. I mean, I, I enjoy banking. Um, I'm very excited to see how blockchain and Bitcoin. Um, you know, because that's a big threat to the banking industry. You know, how, how are they going to handle it? Could you automate this entire banking process? I mean, these are some interesting questions. And I mean, banking is, is almost like, yeah, it's a trillion dollar industry. So if you crack, if you crack the code of banking or you understand this, then, yeah, then like the Illuminati will be like, hey, bro, come, come join us at our round table. Uh, you know, come, come take a seat. Uh, if you can understand all this type of stuff. But I mean, you know, check, we, we into part 12, demonstrate knowledge and understanding of a typical corporate governance structure for a commercial banking operation, including one in South Africa. I mean, wow, they need more full stops around there. Um, demonstrate knowledge and understanding of bank strategy setting and implementation process. Oh, that could be quite fun. What does this have? Stakeholder expectations, risk appetite, organizational structure, resource capacity, um, I think this is the final one. Yeah, discuss and analyze various case studies, the pitfalls of uh, risky liquidity, um, and so forth. So yeah, this this has been uh, this is the marking schedule. But Shame, I don't want to go. I think this video already is too too long, and it's me rambling on about an exam. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, this is just what. So that for that very first question, this is what you had to to write. You had to write all that. Wow, that's a lot of stuff to write in just three hours. Um, yeah, what? Yeah, you can see what the examiner said. This question was very poorly answered. Candidates failed to construct a table of summary ratios by product, which meant that their answers were generally unstructured and failed to cover all the points. Candidates also failed to comment on the fact that the increase in provisions are very large in light of short periods that has passed since the previous calculation. Better candidates consider the state of the economy and that unsecured products react faster. Some went on to comment on home loans and personal loan products. Whew. No, this is this is when you're not messing around. I mean, you know that once you've reached the fellowship level, 
that you know this is this is <laughs> these this is exams you know for for experts people who are used to studying who are probably working in the industry um, probably a little bit older than us I mean these exams are are serious business but um, but sure there we go I just wanted to go through this exam with you guys this is an actuarial exam that nobody passed. So maybe go go download it. I mean, just type in F206 Actuarial Society of South Africa, download it, have a look at it, see if you can um, if you can attempt it. I mean, they have given you the solutions as well, so you can check your solutions. And let me know in the comment section below if you wrote this exam and if you passed it, um, <laughs> because yeah, it is it is the impossible exam. But thanks guys so much for watching washing watching apologies for that um, I am going to be making some more videos around finance and my adventures in studying for the fellowship so yeah check out um, yeah look out for those and sorry I'm talking gibberish now it's because I'm hungry so let me go and eat but yeah thanks guys so much for watching cheers